There is some AI art that you just can't replicate, and that no matter how good your prompts are, you will never get to that level of detail. But today, we're going to learn how to make your own incomparable art pieces. Let's go. The image to image tab is a very underrated part of Automatic 11.11, but when used correctly, it can lead to the best images that no one can replicate. And to do that, we need to really understand how it works. When you have created a picture that you really like, down here you have this send to image to image option. Clicking it will transport all the settings you had into this page, as well as adding the picture into the image to image UI. If you don't have a previously generated image, you can also import any photo that you have on your PC by dragging it in. And now that we have inputted our image, you will see that the UI still has most of what you had in text to image. So what's the deal here? Well, we're going to use this picture as a base to get the perfect result we're looking for. And there are so many techniques, so let's get started. Started. First, we need to know that Stable Diffusion will take whatever it sees in here and try to create a new image based on that and the prompt that you give it. You can use the exact same prompt and seed if you just want to upscale the image. But for now, I'm interested in having a random seed and changing the prompt. This way, we can start to really change the original picture. How much the result differs from the input will depend on the denoising strength. The lower the number, the closest to the original it will be. And the higher the number, the more it will change. It is important to know that even with the denoising strength at 1, the result will still take some of the original image as reference. Here we have the image I just made, that completely by chance, it looks like Katara from the good avatar would make a really good match with it. So let's change the prompt, add the Katara Laura that I have, and then we'll hit generate, this time with the default denoising strength at 0.75. Not a bad result, but I feel like it loses a little too much of the original image. So I'm just gonna use scripts to change the denoising strength and find the result that I like the most. It still needs work, but I like the result result at 0.6 strength, so I'm gonna drag it in and keep working from there. The composition is fine, but I would like a little more space to the right, this way I can add floating water later on. Here the aspect ratio comes into play. We are not bound to the original image's aspect ratio, but if we want to modify it, there's some things we need to keep in mind. If we want to upscale the image, for example double it in size, or if you are a psychopath and you just want to stretch it, we need to use the just resize mode. To crop the image to a new aspect ratio, we will use crop and resize. If you click this icon right here, a grid will appear. Playing with it, you will see that it isn't bound to the input aspect ratio. But don't worry, the grid only marks what you want the initial picture to be. It will follow your aspect ratio starting from the center of the grid. So here, you can adjust what you want the new focus of the image to be. Be really careful though, always maintain the grid inside the picture, or it will create pure black parts on the result. It will be the same as if you inputted an image like this. Also, once it crops, I don't think you can decrop, which is annoying, you will have to drag your initial image again if you crop too much. The same applies to resize and fill. This is the outpainting option. It will take your original input and reimagine the surroundings using AI until it matches the new size. It might look intuitive to use the grid to guide stable diffusion on what parts you want it to fill, but it will just make everything black. Remember that the grid only marks what you want the input to be. So keep it inside the initial image and just use it to pick a new center if you have to. And finally, just resize, late and upscale. This will reimagine everything but following the new image size. I tried finding a use for it, but I don't know, it's just worthless. If you know how to use it, please leave it in the comments for us. Thank you. To get the new composition I need, let's just use the third option. We will probably have to do this twice to get the amount of space I'm looking for, but that's fine. I'll keep the denoising strength at less than half for this, as I don't want it to change the initial image, but I also don't want this to happen. You can keep iterating all you want and adjusting the prompt as you go. Once you found an image you like, you can click on send to image to image and keep going. You can always use image to image just for inspiration, generating similar images but with new concepts. It would be like normal iterating but with a head start. For example, here I could have proceeded with this other image that was also pretty cool and followed the same concept. You can even change the model that you're using to get a completely different result with different styles and capabilities, playing with the denoising strength as you see fit. Notice that from 0.3 to 0.5 5, the image stays relatively close to the original, and going over 0.6 starts changing the image quite a lot. Then between 0.9 and 1 there's a massive difference. What's this? What? Oh, it's the video is getting boring alarm? Oh my god, get this, quick! If you have an image and don't have the prompt to recreate it, you can just drag it into image to image and then click either interrogate clip or interrogate the whatever. And in a few seconds it will give you a prompt that will try to create a similar image. Okay, crisis at Burton. Now, onto this. In painting, once you start with this phase, it will be almost impossible for people to recreate your images. The hardest part of this process is... 
deciding when to stop. It is so much fun. <laughs> you can click this button here or just drag the image in. We will use this to change the image one part at a time, be it by adding details or correcting a certain part like the face, changing a part to make it completely different or adding new fun stuff to add to the image's story. To do this, we need to mask the part that we want to change and then prompt accordingly to what we want. Up until now, we prompted what we wanted the whole image to look like. But from now on, we will prompt based only on what we want inside the mask. It is fine to give some context though. I also like keeping the enhancers in to better match the mood of the overall image. To mask, we can paint over the input, adjusting the paint versus size up here, and if you mess up, just click this button to undo. This is the most common way to do it, but if you need more precision, you can actually import a mask by going into InPaint Upload. For example, let's take this image to Photopea or your editing software of choice and create a quick mask. Make what you want to be masked white and the rest can be full black. Then just add the original image up here and the new exported mask down here. If you want, you can invert the mask inside the UI by clicking the In Paint Not Masked option. So now we could change the main character or if we wanted, we could change everything but the main character. Careful using too precise of a mask as then the image can look like a poor Photoshop job. You can use the mask blur to expand the borders of the mask with a slight fade. In painting is basically an image to image changing only the content inside the masked areas. In order to get the best results, we need to understand these options though. So let's take a look at what they do. First, masked content refers to what the content will be inside the mask when starting the image to image process. You can understand this better by putting the denoise strength at zero and seeing what each model is filling your mask with. The first option will fill the mask areas using the original image's colors surrounding them. This is a pretty good option to erase parts of the image that you don't like or to create new parts using the original color scheme. The noising strength will vary depending on the situation. The original option will keep the insides of the mask as they were before and use that as a base. If you want something similar to what you have, then use a low denoising strength. Else you can play around with it. This will probably be the option that you use the most, as it allows for minor changes or complete reworks. Also, there are some cool tricks that we will see later on. Latent noise is pretty weird. It will use a new noise that looks like this. I would suggest using denoising strength at more than 0.75 if you don't want a church window in the final result. Lowering it can get some cool results though. I'd use it if I wanted something really different from the original image. Or if I wanted this effect for some reason. Light and nothing, like the name implies, it's good for pretty much nothing. It's like a bad feel version, I don't know. I guess it can work if you need something really different from the input but other options aren't working. But at that point you should just use the tab that we are about to see. Before doing that though, we need to understand the most important of options. In paint area, here we have either whole picture or only masked, and this will be what you play around with the most. So I'll try explain the best that I can. Whole picture, it resizes the image to the input resolution while making the changes. It will basically do an image to image of the whole input but only applying the changes to the masked area. It also takes into account all the image as context when deciding what to create. It is really good to erase things from the image or create stuff that needs the overall context, like in this case to avoid having weird perspective changes. Only masked generates the new part of the image with the input resolution, so instead of resizing the whole image, it creates a new generation with the input size and then pastes it back into the original image. This makes it really easy to add detail as you can manually adjust the resolution of each part of the image. Hey, to explain only mask, I'll be fixing the face step by step. I'll do it this way so we can chill for a second and really understand what's going on. First thing to do is to mask the face out and then type a new prompt. I'm gonna take pretty much everything out except the Laura, perfect face and the enhancers and etc. I want her to look focused so I'm gonna add frowning as well. We will obviously use only mask option and that's because faces need a lot of detail. The face that we originally had isn't that bad, so I'm gonna use the original as the masked content. This mode uses only masked pixels for context. By the way, this only works in this mode. So, the more pixels you add, the more context of the original image will be used. We can see this in the preview, where you can actually see the padding pixels that are being taken into consideration. Make the padding larger if you think the result needs a lot of context, and smaller if you want to focus more on the details and you don't really care that much about the rest of the image. For the face, I want detail, but I'll need at least the whole head for context. There is two options to really control what you want in the image. 
One is the tedious job of creating a composed picture in Photoshop and then using that as the background with the original mode on. And to be honest, that is the most reliable one. But I like efficiency, so let's go to... InPaint Sketch. I haven't seen many people use this, but I find it to be such a powerful tool. Here, we can draw over the image with any color you like. This color will not only act as the mask, but you can also use it as part of the input image at the same time. With some super basic drawing skills, you can give a base for stable diffusion to create pretty much anything you need. Don't expect it to create exactly what you had in mind, but depending on your drawing skills, it might be better or worse. So, I paint the water shapes, I use the original as the masked content mode, and bearing the denoising strength depending on your drawing, we can get what we wanted. I would love to explain what mask transparency does, but I haven't found a useful way to use it yet. Using what we learn, we can repeat these steps over and over again until we get the result we were envisioning. I'll pop into Photoshop to adjust what I'm too lazy to do with AI, and finally, we have our image. Now, all it's left is to upscale it. I recommend downloading this upscaler that I'll leave in the description. Just put it in the models ESRGAN folder and that's it. The easiest way to do this is to send the image to extras and upscale it right here, choosing the new upscaler. To unlock the best upscaling option and start using stable diffusion like a pro, you need control net. So watch this video as I teach you how to install the most important extension ever made. See ya.